In the previous video, we installed motors, transducer, wheel guards, and at the end, we had water tested it and made sure it was okay. And we had a basket full of items. In this video, we will install all of these components. We will configure everything and glue everything and finalize it. So it's basically ready to be used. As this is an expensive boat, I don't only want it to be good, I want it to look good. So seen from behind, it should float fairly straight. And also seen from the side, I need it to be looking good also there. Slightly bending forward. What I did here was to tape in all of the components, including uh, batteries and moving them around until I was happy with the result. And I think this is a good solution. Instead of explaining you, I'm going to tell you how I placed them by using some illustrations. First of all, the objects in blue color, they are glued, while all of the other in orange, they are fixed using Velcro. Let's start from the behind. Top left, we have the SkyDroid receiver and the antenna. And then at the bottom left, we have the GPS and our Pixhawk. In the middle section, there will be one electronic speed controller on each side. Uh, front of the boat, top the Raymarine, uh, it will be glued in. I will then use two Wagos uh, for power distribution. The booster will sit in front of the bay tray. The light switch in front of that again. The servo also to be glued in. Then beneath the servo, uh, the electronic speed controller for my bait thrower will sit. And at the bottom of this illustration, you'll see where I intend to put my USB plug and my Wi-Fi uh, secondary telemetry adapter. Power distribution here mainly uh, colored in red. Uh, I will have the major part of the harness in the behind. On the top, I will have uh, the on off switch and a fuse so I can reach it from the uh, battery opening. Uh, there will be a 5 volt power supply for my Pixhawk. Uh, the input to the power system will be the batteries and the battery holders. They are blue, they I will glue in. And then from the battery uh, harness in the behind, <coughs> we will then power each of the electronic speed controllers. And I will then forward a wire to the Wagos up in front. And from those Wagos, I will then power the Raymarine, the thrower, the switch and the booster. And then finally, as illustrated uh, with the white dotted lines, we will connect all of the signaling so everything will work as intended. If you at any point intend to build this particular boat, then this placement of the components is what making the boat float straight. And if you build another boat, then I highly recommend you to start with a floating test and take a picture so you know where every component is supposed to be installed and then you glue them in. When I build a boat from scratch, I don't like to use the power modules as they come in the box. I like to get rid of those thick wires and make it an endpoint. Although a little extra work, this is much more flexible when you build a boat from scratch. As I use a Pixhawk 4 and not a Pixhawk 248, I also had to swap the connector for my SkyDroid telemetry cable. To reduce disturbances for the GPS and get a faster GPS fix, I wrapped the cable with copper to protect it from disturbances. And finally, I fear that the DC connector for the booster was too high, so I bought a USB one. This has a 90 degree top, and yeah, I made my own power cable. 
With this preparations uh, finished, I can then remove all the stuff that uh, are still in the boat. Made sure I have everything ready to clean it. For fixing, most of the parts are going to be fixed with uh, dual lock from 3M. And also notice, right now you have the boat open, make sure to tighten those set screws on the motor shank. So let's just clean up and get ready. First of all, always, always, always properly clean everywhere before you glue. I like to start making paths for cables on both sides using zip ties and anchors, just fixing them and make ready to thread all the cables throughout both sides. And then continue with the electronic speed controllers and made sure also the power button and the programming button has a zip tie. It also needs to be placed in a spot you can reach. So with everything ready, I start then first to connect the electronic speed controller to the motor wires. It doesn't matter which wire you put in where. And then I fix the power input wire. So make sure that everything is possible to connect. And then I find a good spot and fix it. It's important that the cables do not interfere with the motor so it can spin freely. The power button must also be fixed in a place you can reach it. And then you fix that servo cable and the power cable with some zip ties as well. Power cable to the front, I then thread to all of those zip ties and then I end it in a couple of Wago adapters. Before I fix the pick sock to the hull, I add some servo extender cables and I mark them with the channel number. This makes it much easier to connect your gear afterwards. Now uh, I've done a lot of work here and everything looks a little yeah, messy, but let's move on. With the exception of the battery holders, the left side is actually completed. So I fasten the zip ties and move on to the front of the boat. In the front, I connect the antenna cable to the Raymarin and make sure that it can pass the servo without getting in conflict with it and then attach it to the booster and here I have the switch for the lights. Then we have the servo. It is temporarily fixed using Velcro. We need to work on that later. Just make sure it's space for the servo arm and the tube in this direction. Now, before I continue, I will temporarily mount an antenna cable with an antenna to the booster. If you don't do that and start testing it both without no antenna attached, you might actually damage your booster permanently. Let's then have a look at the right side. In the back, I have uh, the GPS, then my PixHawk. In the middle, I have the USB adapter. And in the front, I have the Wi-Fi adapter for secondary telemetry. On the right side, obviously, the electronic speed controller is also mounted and make sure not to strap ties those zip ties just yet. My quick run speed controllers comes with a couple of settings that I do not want. Make sure to keep that red cable attached to the servo wire before you begin. This is needed for power. Using a program card makes this process a lot easier. You have an item button that you can press to select which item or which setting that you want to program. And you have a value button that you can cycle through each of the values to make those settings right. So as you see here, when I press the value button, I can change the value. And then I hit save to store that value. Let's first make the ESC only do forward and reverse and not having a break. Then I want to avoid a potential problem by disabling low voltage cutoff. Even though the settings are saved, I make it a habit to power off and power on 
and go through those values again, making absolutely sure that my desired settings are saved. As the settings are programmed, I can now finally remove that red cable to make sure I don't power my Pixhawk from multiple power sources. It's not that hard, just make sure you use a sharp blade. Then we move on to the thrower speed controller. This uses another programming card. It has LEDs, not numbers. We're going to focus on setting number four here. This is low voltage cutoff. I'm going to set that to low. That equals 2.85 volts. And this should avoid most problematic situations. Next in line is our radio receiver. Uh, I make sure that the antennas are formed like a V by using a couple of zip ties and a zip tie anchor like this. We then continue with the radio. Uh, on the back side, you have the battery openings. This radio uses two lithium cells. Just put them in. When the remote transmitter now has power, we can turn it on and make sure that it works. When you turn on the boat, you should see the green light on the receiver. As the remote is now working, I would very much like to see that my servo is working before I glue it on. This looks really good. A couple of centimeters movement looks nice. Also in the front, I need to make sure my booster is actually working. A red light on top, blinking green light, no problems. This looks good. As I have not yet uh, modified my thrower, I still have the 3.5 mm plugs attached. I can now attach them directly through to the electronic speed controller, power on the boat and do a test to see that my thrower motor is working properly. And finally, I need to make sure that my lights are also working. So I plug in the upper hole and do some testing first of the front lights and they actually look great. Making a couple of tests here and move on to the back lights and they are super bright and I'm really happy with this result. I also make sure to properly calibrate my speed controllers for the motors. Now it's the time to use that power switch for the speed controller. First we turn the power switch off. Then press down the programming button and turn it on again. When the speed controller starts beeping, it's a three-step process we need to go through. First, we leave the stick in the middle and we press down that programming button once. Then push your stick forward and push that programming button for the second time. And finally, push that stick all the way back and push it for the third time and you're done. When calibration is complete, we can do a test to feel the wind blow here and to feel the wind blow here. And then the time has come for our battery opener. Some attention to detail is needed here. We will use a push rod of steel and a tube. And obviously the tube will then be fixed to the hull and the steel rod will glide through it. The steel rod is pushed through the eye of the servo rod. And then we can start making some measurements to figure out where the hole should be made. It's important that we make this uh, hole below the plate. I used a 3.2 millimeter drill for this purpose. With this small hull, I'm really glad I use Velcro to fix stuff so I can make more space. Oh my God. I then uh, attach some glue below the hole and then follow the same principle with glue on the part, 
pushed through the hole. And then attach some additional glue. With the tube halfway fixed, I then turn my attention to the servo and I make sure before I glue it in that the screws are tightened and only then I glue it in and attach that servo arm. And then I finalize to make a good strong fitting around that tube and I tab it hard. The battery holders I leave as the last task. They block the way to the hull. Uh, we just need to press them hard against the hull with glue and then just fix it with tape so they don't slide while the glue is drying. Make sure to fit it properly and then just attach that tape. And voila, we now have a fully built and fully working lower hull. Uh, if you build it like I did, this is how you place the components. Uh, to make sure it floats correctly in the water. Yeah, and next video we will then look at how to configure the boat to make it a real good bait boat.